This is Twit. So Voyager, we finally uh, we finally got a phone call. This is correct. So uh, that's right. NASA's uh, Jet Propulsion Laboratory announced uh, uh, just just earlier this week that that they did, in fact, after five months of not hearing from the Voyager spacecraft, what was it like 11 billion miles away, something like that, uh, out in interstellar space, that they got that little bip uh, back from the spacecraft. So they know uh, that they're back in contact. They know that the they they have the health uh, of the spacecraft for the first time. Uh, and um, and that's really exciting because as we were talking about in our updates on this in the past, it is not like a fast process to try to talk to Voyager 1 out there beyond the stars. I mean, it takes 45 hour round trip. That's right. It takes two days just to just to have one conversation. And uh, and so they had to basically isolate over the last five months, you know, where is the glitch? W- what system is it in? Oh, oh, it's in this this little bit, you know. And uh, and over time, they were able to kind of get to the part where uh, they are in um, in communication, like where they can understand what the, the spacecraft is saying. It's not sending it out back the gobbledygook that it was doing before. And um, you know, <laughs> we're talking about forty seven year old things. <laughs> This this is oh, this is good point. Yeah, this is this is Voyager, you know, turning for, uh, 47 this year, too. And uh, and so uh, it's just it's just amazing that they've been able to to, to get it because it, it's been um, uh, what it's been since November 14th that all of this stuff really started. And uh, well, and we're uh, talking about a, a, an almost half century old computer with all the memory of a tennis shoe. You know, yeah. I mean, it's really if you if you showed somebody on a pie chart what it could do versus a modern iphone or something you'd you'd just fall out of your chair laughing oh wait yeah. you do that anyway <laughs> you know what i mean yeah yeah and and, and there's a there, i know that on the video side of things we were showing the 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 story earlier there's a great photo there of the jpl team with their arms up like like in in touchdown you know uh victory uh just cheering when they got uh uh that um, that contact restored uh, and i undersold it it's, I, I said 11 billion miles no they're like 15, 15. billion miles yeah. out there um and the, the on, on the video uh for folks on on that side you can see that that photo now of all these uh, uh these engineers and scientists on the voyager flight team elderly engineers <laughs> no no i wouldn't say i'd say it's a good mix uh, so. no well I, i'm looking i saw a lot of people that kind of look like they're edging up on my age but they would be <laughs> right yeah, but the work's not done, uh, Rod. The work's not done here because they do need to spend like the next few weeks basically adjusting the rest of this flight data software, which is where they isolated the glitch over these last few months uh, to be to recover all of the parts of that system um, that, you know, have to package and, and, and send back the, the science data that Voyager is still capable of because it can do some. The power is very low, so it can't use all of its instruments. Right. Um, but they want to make sure that they they get that all sorted over the next few weeks. So they'll take it slow, like we said, 15 million miles, two day round trip. But uh, uh, but they're going to get there, and, and it seems like we're going to at least be all set for a nice 47th anniversary in uh, uh, what was that in September in August, right? Is that when they launched July? Uh, anyway, in they, the summer. They launched in the across summer. two months. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Moving on. Uh, China's new space station had an issue. Oh, you changed the headline. I'm sorry. China's oh. Shenzhou 18 crew launches Tiangong to Tiangong space station, mm-hmm. which was hit by a piece of space crud. Yeah, yeah. Well, the it's it, they didn't happen at the same time. This is really interesting. But yeah, the the news came out kind of back to back. Essentially, this week, uh, actually on my birthday, because I think that China was trying to give me a message. Uh, they <laughs> they launched their new crew to the internet to the to the international to the Tiangong space station. Uh, it was a six and a half hour trip. They've got it pretty pretty uh, swift, like a. Uh, like like was Cosmos and 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 SpaceX, uh, and uh, and this they includes I think the commander uh, or the a, a member of the Shenzhou thirteen crew who is the new commander, uh, as well as two others uh, who joined three other astronauts on the station now. So a big crew change, but this uh, and you know this has been going on now for for several years. China now has a basically permanently crewed space station in orbit. Uh, but what we did find out just days ahead of this launch, and it came out actually during the press conference for this mission, is that the Shenzhou 17 crew, so that's the crew that was already up there, they did two spacewalks over the last few months. I think one was in like the December time frame, and then there was one in March. And it turned out that so some of the tasks on those spacewalks were to repair 
the actual Tiangong space station because it was struck by debris. And we don't know what, was it like a, a meteoroid or was it uh, actual spacecraft debris, space junk um, that knocked out part of the power system on the spacecraft, which you never want to have on your spacecraft. So they had to do some sort of uh, patch ups uh, to, to fix that. And, um, and, it it came out, and this was a report that um, uh, that we had seen from um, from both uh, 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 Xinhua News as well as like from Reuters and others. Uh, but it, it did come out that China said that they're going to develop new plans in place when it comes to space debris management. Uh, now, now, now they're saying they're going to do this, you know, right. after they they they've blown up, you know, a satellite and created vast clouds of debris and just throw stuff, you know, all over the place. Now, after a piece hits their uh, their space station, now they're going to say they're going to you know try to rein that back in. Uh, so that was those were kind of two interesting things where they they had this debris event at the space station, admitted that they had to fix it, uh, and then they had a new crew that's going to be responsible for dealing with that uh, over the ne- next um, next six months or so. All right, and uh, oh, China has announced partnerships with Nicaragua, the oh, Arab yeah. Union for Astronomy. And the Pacific Space Cooperation Organization, which is headquartered in Beijing, for the International Lunar Research Station, which is their answer to the Artemis Accords, came along a little later, uh, is not punching quite as high as Artemis is. Uh, They have, uh, what did I put here, 10, I think 10 or 11 partners, and we're up to 38 now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, no. I added this thing. one just because of the moon, the moon aspect of it. This was from right. Space News, by the way, that had this story, and um, and it was interesting because, as you mentioned, I think Slovakia signed the Artemis Accords recently uh, to become one of the newest members in NASA. There was another uh, country as well, uh, and at the same time, you have China uh, reaching out to other folks uh, around the world too. So you have Nicaragua now, the Arab Union for Astronomy. Um, and this Pacific Space Corporation, which is actually an organization based in Beijing, right? Uh, but um, which but kinda, it's, uh, it, it, you kind of wonder if that counts, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, hey, I got my uncle but Fred the, to sign up. The reason I I bring this part up is because uh, in addition to this international outreach, which we've seen in the past, because China has said that they want to cooperate with Russia as well on this research uh, project, this research base on the moon, uh, they actually released. A very interesting video and i didn't have time to find it it was on twitter uh to add it in here but maybe we'll add the link in after we're done where they show what like all of the chinese astronauts on the moon a vast kind of metropolis moon base and i think in the background there was a space shuttle an actual space shuttle oh like, that, like a, that show. yeah, <laughs> yeah well, there was a space off. shuttle with with without any support structure or external tank taking off in the background yeah it was kind of uh, kind of weird yeah yeah so because so of course you need a glider on the moon right yeah but 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 it just shows that they are they are trying to push the international aspect of it all i will Though, be interested to see if that international part factors into the Tiangong space station to see if we see an international crew member or someone on like a crew rotation. So you only have two Chinese astronauts and maybe one partner from these countries that flies up to Tiangong, you know, is there for rotation and returns back to Earth. You know, that'll be very interesting to see how this new program or not this new program, but this this moon program uh, builds on the space station because they have that asset up there right now. Well, it's interesting because uh, the ILRS, as we like to call it, started as international between them and Russia. Yeah. And yet uh, and they bought the Shenzhou spacecraft, you know, the original uh, drawings and design for it from Russia. Uh, And yet we have not seen a cooperative flight on on Tiangong yet, have we? No, no, not yet. Or on Shenzhou Uh, either. But speaking of space debris, there was a Shenzhou orbital module that burned up over the West coast that lit up the skies over California. So, so they, we were just talking about debris. There is that too. Um, but it, you know, right, right now, Russia is, is in their partnership. Russia Cosmos is in their partnership with the international space station. I'm, uh, unless there's some sort of really easy way to, to, to team up for, for Tiangong as part of like an early partnership, uh, uh, for this, this moon program. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that, that factor is in because Russia's kind of locked in to the space station project, the ISS project right now, uh, until it's done in 2030 or so. So, Well, or until they say they're done. Until they say they're done. Which they have intimated a few times. Now we're going to leave next week. Hey, if you enjoyed this clip, be sure to check out This Week in Space. You can find us on your favorite podcast app 
or see the link in the description below. See you there.